Hello everyone and welcome to the other big game of round 7 uh, of FIDE Candidates Tournament. Uh, it is uh, Hikaru Nakamura versus Yanni Pomnishi, a clash of two speed demons. And uh, th this game, they really were speed demons. You guys will not believe how, how quickly they played in this game. And uh, we even uh, uh, have some interesting uh, stats about this matchup. So it's round 7, Hikaru age 33, Nepo 30, uh, Hikaru 36, Nepo 33. Uh, you can see Hikaru number 3 in the world by current rankings, uh, Nepo number 7. Uh, 2789 rating versus 2758 and a peak rating of 2018-16 versus Nepo's 2795. So Hikaru is a former 2800 player and Nepo is an almost uh, 2800 former player. And their head-to-head -head score, 2 wins each with seven draws so this is definitely a big one uh, as they are tied uh, currently in classical chess uh, so that being said uh, let's check it out we even have a nice photo of um, uh, the the uh, the arrival here we have a nice standing versus sitting handshake i don't know if you guys prefer that or when the player first sits down and then they have a handshake i don't know i guess it's uh, uh I, I i i think i also prefer you know to first give a handshake and then sit down but yeah I guess it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, but let's check it out. Pawn to e4 by Hikaru. Pawn to e5, knight f3, knight to f6. Nepo goes for the Petrov defense, knight captures on e5, the classical variation, d6, knight f3, and knight captures on e4. Okay, very standard stuff, the classical variation of the Petrov. d4, d5, bishop to d3. Uh, and the bishop to d6. We have castles by both players, uh, c4 and uh, c6. And... Uh, Okay, many, many games in this attack, nothing nothing out of the ordinary here, rook t1, putting pressure on the knight, bishop to f5, defending the knight, and now queen b3, putting pressure on the center, but also on the b7 pawn. So, queen to d7, uh, it's a bit, a bit of a trick, you know, don't fall for this, if someone plays it against you, you might think, okay, that's a, that's a juicy pawn right there, but then comes bishop captures on h2, and uh, you, you blunder your queen. So, uh... Usually knight to c3 is played here just to increase the tension in the center or you advance the pawn to c5. Uh, so this is what Hikaru goes for. Bishop to c7 and g3 now. The bishop here is very dangerous and the g3 uh, should definitely be played. Uh, but here, uh, okay, there are some moves. Uh, queen to c8 and b6 are known. But here we have uh, pawn to a5 and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So, okay, knight b to d2, increasing the tension in the center. And now if you uh, d d defend the knight with rook to e8, then knight to h4 harasses the bishop and then it uh, just gets ugly. So Nepo finds this very beautiful bishop d6 or rather doesn't find it i'm pretty sure he has it prepared as he's not spending any time here the idea is that if knight captures pawn captures the queen is attacked and now if queen captures on b7 e captures on d3 and after queen captures on a8 there's a bishop to d5 and you don't want to, to grab the exchange for this much compensation uh, so instead after bishop d6 queen captures on b7 by hikaru and now comes knight captures on f2 you might think wow what a beautiful knight sacrifice but the knight cannot be taken if the knight is taken then look at this the the queens are x-raying each other and that means that if bishop captures on g3 with check off goes the the white queen so it's not really a, a knight sacrifice as much as it is an exchange sacrifice and also the bishop here is hanging if you just take the rook so Hikaru has to make a choice to move the bishop back or to capture on h7 with check uh, he decides to go for bishop captures on h7 with check uh, king captures on h7 and now queen captures on a8 grabbing the rook knight to h3 with check getting the knight out of harm's way King to g2 and the bishop to g4. And now it's very tricky. How does uh, Hikaru meet rook to e8? Uh, this will force the rook off of the e-file. Or you will trade and then uh, give control of the e-file to the black queen. And if the black queen comes to e2, it's all over. So Hikaru finds queen to b7. It's just in time. The, the idea is come to b3. Uh, remaneuver the queen to d3 with check. So you don't lose time. And then you gain control over e2. You can put a queen to f1 or, or keep her on d3. Uh, unless something like bishop to f5 is played but yeah that's the way to do it so okay rook to e8 by nepo queen to b3 and hikaru trades rook captures on e1 knight captures on e1 uh, again my phone started listening to me for some reason and interestingly every time i say that in the video you guys also say uh, that yours also started listening to you so probably some word that i say uh, while analyzing chess uh triggers it uh, queen to e6, we have queen to d3 with check, uh, the king has to move or you block with the bishop, Nepo blocks with the bishop and now queen to f1. 
uh, we have knight d7. Of course, you want to bring that knight into the game. The e4 square uh, is beautiful for this knight. And uh, it's easy to find such a move. You know, you look at this position. Uh, this is a uh, beautiful piece, beautiful piece, beautiful piece, uh, beautiful piece, a beautiful active piece. And this is a terrible piece. And if you just imagine this piece to be here, all of a sudden your position is incredible. So, uh, you know, definitely a way that you can find moves. Knight to d7. And here comes the first real thing of Hikaru. All of this Hikaru played in five minutes. And here comes the first real move for Hikaru, knight e to f3, uh, where he spent some 15 minutes um, deciding on how to continue. We have knight to f6 by Nepo, knight to g1, as Hikaru is up the material. He does have a rook for, uh, for a bishop. It does make sense to, to trade off uh, as many attackers as possible. Plus, Nepo does have the safer king. So he wants an even safer king, king to g8, queen to e2, now offering a queen trade, and knight to e4. And, uh, okay, Hikaru has to make a choice here. Does he capture the knight or does he go for something else? Uh, the problem is, okay, you do want to uh, remove as many attackers as possible. But if you go like this, let's say bishop g4 attacks the queen, queen to e3, and now uh, there's this nasty knight captures on c5 move. Uh, where uh, if you trade, it's not really uh, the best. The knight will just capture the queen. And if you move the queen, again, nothing uh, spectacular. So knight to b1 will be played. You want uh, the trade to happen on e3. So you develop your pieces while doing it. And after, let's say, knight e4, then comes knight to c3 and bishop to h3. It just doesn't look like uh, like much for white. Yes, you're up the exchange, but the bishop pair, the past e pawn, uh, is compensation uh, enough. So after knight e4, pawn to a4 was played, and this allows Nepo to go for a, a very, very cool move, and he plays bishop captures on g3. Now, Nepo did burn a lot of time. Uh, here, he's already down to 27 minutes, but Hikaru is also down to 50 minutes, uh, where he has to now decide how to play this. You have to capture the bishop, uh, otherwise um, uh, you're, you're just lost here. There's no saving uh, the, the position if you don't take the bishop. So h captures on g4, and now knight to f4 check with a royal fork, so you have to capture, and now queen to g6 with check. And you have three options here, king to f1, you can go king to h1, king to h2, and uh, that's pretty much it. If you go king to f3, then queen to g3 is just checkmate. So your option is king h1, which runs into a royal fork with knight g3. If you go to h2, not much better, queen g3 check, king h1, knight to f2 check, Again, you have to give up the queen and you will get checkmated very quickly. So Hikaru finds the only way to continue. King f1, knight to g3 check. You lose the queen, but you can continue the game. King e1, knight captures on e2, knight captures and now bishop g4. Hoping to get the queen to d3 to do some serious damage, but Hikaru stops it. Rook a3. Uh, we have bishop captures on uh, e2. Uh, and now king captures on e2. And now uh, we have uh, queen to g1. Uh, just uh, putting pressure on that bishop and on the d4 pawn. And the problem is there's no real, uh, real way of... Um... Uh, there's no real way of uh, continuing the game for, for either side. You could consider maybe giving up the d4 pawn, but even if you play something like rook c3, you give up the pawn. Let's say knight 3 you give up the a4 pawn as well, and b3. Okay, now everything is nicely defended, but uh, there's no real way to push for anything here uh, with white. So Hikaru goes for knight to b3. He just defends both the bishop and the d4 pawn, and Nepo starts checking. Queen g2, king to d1. We have queen to f3 check, king to c2. Queen to e4 check, king to c3, and now queen to f3 with check. We have king to c2, and now a nice repetition of moves, and after queen to e4 check, upon reaching time control, uh, the game ended in a draw, as there was a threefold repetition. Uh, so yeah, uh, brilliant uh, game by both of them. Uh, you know, if this, like I said, if this was played by any other two players, uh, this game would probably... Uh, burn uh, both of the clocks until the very end, but uh, you know uh, he, uh, the, the two of them n not so much. They they had all the time in the world to uh, to play this, uh, you know, even even to spare. And uh, yeah, for those of you who haven't seen in the previous video, uh, I don't know if I've shown you this. This is the this is the moment where uh, knight captures on f2 was played. Then uh, Hikaru took the queen, uh, the rook with the queen on a8, and Nepo had to uh, decide how to continue to the game. So you can see that there. Uh, completely unfazed, they're just minding their own business. Uh, okay, Nepo looking at the board because it's his move, but nothing really happening here. And for those of you who haven't seen my previous video, 
do watch it but also here are the standings after the seven rounds have been played so after the first half of the tournament have fi has finished Yanni Pomnishi in the lead with four and a half points uh he and Fabi are the only two players still undefeated uh, in the FIDE candidates tournament uh Fabi Prague and Gukesh with four points uh, in close pursuit of Nepo Hikaru and Vidit with three and a half points Alireza after finally winning a game uh, on two and a half points and Nijat Abasov still without a win uh, with two points so anything can still happen uh, this is only the first half of the tournament. Now we're going to have all of all of the same games with colors reversed. Uh, so uh, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that as I am very much looking forward to that. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank William Smith, uh, Thomas Zigeri, uh, Thomas Dernoga, MPU Consulting, and Shai Gross for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the FIDE candidates tournament uh, until it finishes uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and if you still haven't do check out our app for improving at chess the improve app first link in the description below uh i would really love to, to hear your comments on that uh see you soon